Hi, thanks for watching this gratuitous Space Battles 2 video. I'm Regdrin, and next to me is my brother R90. Here for only the most gratuitous of space battles. R90 is his real name, I swear. You can look it up, it's a matter of Research public record. Activated. I've reset everything in this game, but I have played it before. We're starting from a completely empty research, uh, battle mode. What, what should I call it? It's not a tree. Uh, research block. Okay, yeah, that's good. Research block. And we're just going to go through the tutorial. The, I'm not actually going to talk much about what I'm doing in the tutorial because, frankly, I find it kind of boring. Plus, if you do what the tutorial tells you, you might actually lose pretty bad. That, that actually sounds kind of interesting. So, in that case, maybe I should say a little about it. Concentration of force is pretty important. Uh, I suppose spreading everything out in the first battle would be a good learning experience. In one way or another. So, you got started... When did you get started with gratuitous space battles? Pretty much as soon as the first one released. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that, since we it helps to get a bit of background into this. Well, Gratuitous Space Battles is uh, different from uh, a lot of other space battle games in that you don't actually control your uh, ships. It's more like a puzzle game where you have to build stuff Enemy and assign orders and then you watch them go. I've also heard it described as a spreadsheet game. Kinda. Well, let's t talk a little bit about the gameplay on the first one, because I've heard from people who are really into it that the balance is quite good, which surprised me considering that I heard about ships with armor that was unpierceable by anything. Well, that got fixed. Yeah, um, I have heard that it still works that way, but I guess lucky shots are a bit better, or...? Oh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, there, speaking of learning ex experiences, uh, you may notice that on the left so side of the screen, the fighter squads are dying really fast. The, um, that's a clue about why fighters do not work well in this version of the game. I'll get into that later, though. Okay. Yeah, in the first one, there were cruisers, frigates, and fighters, and all of them seemed pretty viable. Was that your experience? Uh, yeah. Fighters took a bit of tweaking because of uh, how little stuff they could carry, but there was a lot of stuff you could do with them. Right, okay. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how that was changed later on, but how, how far into Gertrude's Space Bells when did you get? Did you get all the expansions? I didn't get all of them. I got a few of them. And I really played a lot of that game. Okay, so what would you say was your general style of doing things? Was there a certain kind of ship that you favored? Well, one of the things that actually worked well on the Rebel side was uh, something ironically uh, called the Star Destroyer build, which was just four pulse lasers, two missile scramblers, and um, uh, enough speed to get it in there. Right. Now, uh, how do you deal with armor in that build? Oh, that was a while ago. But armor was there, don't worry about it. Okay. Well, I was thinking about how you dealt enemy with enemy armor. armor. Has been obliterated. Or Actually, um, uh, the uh, cruiser heavy pulse laser was able to def reliably defeat anything except maybe alliance armor. Okay. So, uh... I suppose all of that wasn't too helpful if you're brand new to this genre, but, uh, maybe... Actually, you've been playing uh, this game a lot more than I have, so what, what would you say, aside from the general, uh, gameplay, if t uh, to someone who was completely new to this? Well, you're gonna lose, basically. The first uh, few uh, real battles you're going to lose, but what you're going to have to do is really pay attention to what was working and uh, what wasn't, what was bouncing off of what, and uh, so on. Yeah, I think that the first game was actually better with, with that with, than the second one, I'm sad to say. It was easier to find all of the little details. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in this game you can easily look at the design of enemy ships. Oh yeah. Uh, which was helpful for me when starting out, but I found some pretty big weaknesses later on, so I wouldn't rely on enemy designs as the best you can find. 
Oh yeah. I think that the creator of the opposing fleets in this game had different ideas of uh, what he wanted to work and what actually worked. Well, remember, opposing fleets are generally designed to be beatable. Well, yeah, I guess there is that. Personally, uh, I think I'd prefer enemy fleets that I can uh, edge out at 80% than ones that I can uh, beat at 50%, though. Well, that's your opinion. Okay, uh, maybe... If you want that sort of thing, you need to go into player challenges. Victory is ours. You know what, that's that's actually kind of a good point. Accessibility is pretty important. So what was your first experiences with Gratuitous Space Battles 2? Was it kind of a jolt for Starship you? Design mode activated. When I lost the very first real battle, yes. Oh, okay. So what sort of pitfalls did you run into? Not enough shield breaking. Oh yeah, yeah, shields are uh, really powerful in this game. Uh, especially because of the way support works now. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, one of the new classes is dedicated entirely to support boosting things Activated. like shields and engines and that sort of thing. Well, they're pretty good against fighters, too. Also, uh, I was surprised by how quickly you could get honor in this game. Oh, yeah. I remember scraping it out a bit of... Uh, at a time in the first one, and this one is kind of different. Well, you can get a lot more honor uh, through normal uh, means. However, in the first game, uh, you could uh, do multiracial uh, honor because uh, the honor count reset uh, for each race you played. That is something I did not know, actually. Dang. Well, if I go back to the first game, I'll need to keep that in mind. Mm hmm. Did you have any experiences of note in the tutorial? For this game? Yeah, for this game. Uh, not that I can remember. I just remembered getting tired of it and just hitting return after a while. Uh-huh. Yeah, the thing... Yeah, there's no real way to turn it off uh, when you're doing a new install of this game. Enemy fleet detected ahead. Now, one of the things I discovered that would need tweaking as far as ship design is that the sample destroyers were not actually very good at shooting down fighters. Yeah, that's probably why it took me a long time to come around to destroyers. Well, yeah, I, w I guess it's kind of weird. Because uh, the enemy fighters mostly use shield disruption, they aren't actually much of a threat. Because if you place it right, you only face one cruiser at a time, and so the fighters don't matter. Uh -huh. But look at how many fighters are still swarming all over the place. And they're getting shot down maybe a couple at a time. Uh-huh. Uh, I think this is more of an indictment of fighters than it is about anything else. Because later on we can put together some destroyers that really are good at shooting those fighters down. And we'll need them because some of the later or even earlier missions on Expert will put a huge amount of points into fighters. And these will be missile fighters, uh, which require some really good planning to deal with. Yeah, especially torpedo fighters, because they can hurt just about anything. So fighters are useless except when they aren't? Well, uh, they're useful if you outnumber the enemy by a lot. So they aren't useful to the player most of the time. Oh, that sounds about right. Now, uh, next, that's about the end, actually. Next time we'll talk about what to unlock first, my goals, and... A real battle? A real battle, yes. Thank you. Okay, well, see you next time. Bye.